back to the show, everybody. I hope you're loving the spring weather like we are. And today's episode is a special one. This episode is a request from one of our Lapri Beauty members, Angie. Hey, Angie. Hey, Angie. Thanks for your question, Angie. Angie's question is all about occasional minor breakouts and mild acne. You know, we all experience this and we just appreciate this suggestion. Even as an esthetician, I experienced that breakout, <laughs> but it's a, nice to know, oh, I've got the tools in my back pocket to get through this breakout and I'm about to share all my skincare tools and tips with you. But if you ever have a suggestion, please reach out to us and we would love to add it to our list. We get our questions from our members. So no need to send me a DM because I'm going to send you right to our LaPree Beauty online skincare membership. Head to lindsayholder.com, join the membership. It's super easy and you can DM us. And then we add the questions to our podcast list, just like Angie's question. It's such a beautiful day outside right now. Ashley is packing. You've got some big news. Where are you headed off? I know this is something off your bucket list. Where are you going? Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. So it has been on my bucket list for so long to snorkel on a coral reef. And so, Ooh, I didn't know you were doing that. Yeah. We're snorkeling on a coral reef. I pre-booked it like six months ago and we're going to go to the Florida Keys to do that. So we're going to stay in um, Key Largo and then we're also going to visit Key West. And I just want you to know, nice. I am taking so much sunscreen and I'm definitely making it reef approved sunscreen. And right now I'm actually in the process of researching what sunscreens I'm taking. And then of course I'm also taking so many hats, rash guards, sunglasses, all the good sun protective clothing. Oh, and this is a good tip that I learned from you, Lindsay. I'm also taking a bandana to cover my neck. I love that. So that when we're out shopping and stuff, I want to, you know, keep my neck covered. And And I put the bandana on my neck in the pool in the ocean too. And I get it wet first because it cools me down as well. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. feels nice. I didn't know about that trick that's a really good because it's going to be hot there I didn't know about that trick yeah and then another little tip that I researched and picked up is that when you're out in the sun because it's spring and then we're also heading into the summer when you're heading out in the sun you want to wear darker colors because the light can't penetrate through as easily so I was thinking oh wait a minute I don't want to wear a bunch of white long sleeve shirts I need to get darker colors I love white Unless, well, you can wear white, but you're going to need to pay the money for the SPF clothing that's pretty expensive, or you can get something that you can wash your clothes in, an SPF laundry detergent that you can actually wash your clothes in, and it will up the SPF of your clothing. So I've got like four people going, and so that's pretty pricey to Oh, little children who you're going to wear this light for two months and I'm going to blow all of this money. Instead, get the laundry detergent and up your SPF for your kids. Yeah. So I thought that's a good little tip. Did they know that they are going snorkeling? The kids. Oh, yes. And they've had their cute little opinions (laughs) about which place we're going to and all this stuff. And I'm like, look, kids, this is where we're going. You're welcome. And no fussing. Yeah. (laughs) Well... That's not going to happen, but I'm so excited for you. That's going to be such a fun trip. It is. I'm excited for myself. Um, Also take those SPF stickers. I know we're going to do a sunscreen podcast in the near future, but you put those sunscreen SPF stickers in on your skin and it tells you, and then you put your sunscreen over it. It tells you when your sunscreen has worn off. We'll put the stickers that I'm thinking of inside our shop. My favorites spa store online, go to lindsayholder.com. It says shop my favorites and just head to this podcast episode and everything that we talk about will be in there. We'll put some stuff in there. Well, today's topic is such a good one because it seems that when I have someplace I want to be or an event I'm attending, I will have those annoying, oh, occasional breakouts during that time. Or we have a photo shoot or something. Oh, I was like, I remember the last photo shoot we had. I looked at Lindsay and I go, thank goodness our skin is clear. Yeah. Like we were really stressed out and we we're like, oh, thank you, Lord. We didn't get a pimple. We was on the cover. That was a cover of a magazine, which we were so excited about. We had a 
it was a large spread inside. I don't know. It was either four or six pages with this inside a hotel. So we had to look our best. Our bet you get one shot. This was it. Like it just you had to, you know, it was like, well, this is your moment. And oh, it was just such a blessing that we didn't have a breakout. But Lindsay and I have seen so many clients that are confused and embarrassed because they assume that, oh, a breakout's just for teenagers and it's not. Go ahead. I know I keep interrupting, yeah. but I just thought when we did that photo shoot, yeah, our skin l- worked well with us. I'm so happy. And it was fun too, because we had like a gold mask and a pink mask. Like they were all organic. Oh, and that was fun. Research, really fun. But one thing that also just always sticks with me is that Ashley and I, it was a fall shoot. And so we were in front of a fire pit with the mountains and sunset behind us. And it was beautiful. Oh, this is so fun. But the fire pits in front of us, right? Fire pits in front of us. For some reason, these guys, <laughs> they were sitting down. They were not going to move and they were drinking their Moscow mules or whatever and just stared. So Ashley and I had just to stared in our eyeballs in our eyeballs. as the photographer was right behind us. So we basically had to look past them and smile and pretend that this was not the most awkward moment ever. It was so awkward. embarrassing. And they're just drinking their drinks, like sitting back in their chairs, just like, I'm like, I want to say, I hope you're enjoying the view here. Like, get up. (laughs) Yeah, get up. Like two minutes. And we even said, we're just going to be here for a quick second. Is this going to bother you? Nope. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, this is where our inner confidence comes in. And I'm like, you're not going to ruin my shoot. Right. We are going to smile and we're going to have that sparkle in our eyes, sir. (laughs) Yeah, so that was a fun shoot. That was really exciting. And today we are going to really talk about your mild breakouts. So what is causing your mild breakouts? I want to help our listeners out with this and give you a few tips as a master esthetician of 13 years and a spa owner. And Ashley is head of research and development. Ashley has a master's in education, master's plus 30, right, Ashley? Yeah, master's plus 30. I almost went for my PhD because I just didn't have that much to go to add on to it. But then I got married and had kids and that squashed that in the bucket. (laughs) But she's great at all. She does all of our research. And it's so I mean, she's one smart cookie. So let's talk about what is causing your mild breakouts. And the first thing is I said cookie and we don't want to eat cookies with our breakouts. (laughs) Oh my god. It's hilarious. <laughs> they have sugar in them. <laughs> Before we begin treating your occasional breakouts, we need to get to the root of the problem <laughs> so you can understand and possibly make some changes. The mild acne flare ups can be a result of excessive. There's a lot of things, people. Okay. You have excessive stress, changes in hormones. It can be either pregnancy, perimenopause, menopause makeup, even like dirty makeup brushes, like watch your cleaning stuff too. Watch your pillows, watch your... Oh, I did a whole episode on cleaning. So go back to find that. Ash, will you look up that episode real quick? It was episode 93, how to clean your makeup brushes, skincare tools and beauty tools. Yes, please look at that. Because I mean, that has bacteria, boom, there's an occasional breakout right there with all of that. Medications, supplements, clothing, nutrition, your gut... Overusing products, I see that a lot. Overusing products, like your skincare routine is just too much. So what's happening is you've compromised your skin barrier and your skin barrier needs to heal and you need to have it repaired. So I'm going to advise you to back off of everything and then slowly add stuff in if your breakouts are getting a little worse and even genetics. So the key here is to treat these breakouts when they're mild. Otherwise, what can happen is they can worsen and they can lead to other issues as larger blemishes spreading to other areas of your face and, you know, this gets serious scarring. And as Lindsay said, there's a couple of podcasts that you, I want to encourage you to listen to. They are related to and are about acne that go into depth. And so it may spark something. So they are episodes 47 is entitled acne and how to treat acne. And then there's also episode 15 on how to get glowy skin with one of Glow Skin's Beauty's esthetician where Lindsay, her name's Anne and Lindsay talks to her and it's such a great episode. Love Anne. And then the other episode that I just mentioned was episode 93 on how to clean your makeup brushes, skincare tools and beauty tools. And I will say that episode 
I'm not going to kid it. I'm not kidding. I walked in there going, I told Lindsay, I go, I don't want to do this episode. This is so boring. I just, I can't. Everybody knows how to wash their makeup tools. And it was so informative. It was not boring. <laughs> and I had to apologize to Lindsay at the end. That's right. I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I said, that was so good. I had no idea about all this stuff. And that was a hard pill to swallow. And esthetician thinks a little differently. We get detail, like a really good esthetician. We get detail and like, I bet you didn't know about this. <laughs> and I didn't. And I'm pretty well versed in the skin world and just still learning. Oh, yep. oh, oh, we just did that, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. We're sisters, if y'all don't know that, by the way. I'm still learning. I will tell you that I study skincare every single day. Because, well, A, it's my passion and I want to keep up. So every day I study a little bit about skincare every single day, just so you know. The most common spots of adult acne appear usually on these areas, the jawline, around the mouth, your neck and your chest area, and sometimes on your back too. Don't forget about that, especially in the sweaty summer or when you, if you do sports and stuff. This occurs because we have most of our sebaceous glands in these areas. And just to simplify what sebaceous glands are, is just where our bodies produce our natural oils. So when these oils get clogged, they can trap that bacteria, dead skin cells, and oil. The result of all of this combined is that's when we see a pimple. Whiteheads, those are entirely blocked pores, or blackheads, those are partially blocked pores. Here's where I know you want to learn the information. What are ways that you can treat your occasional breakouts or mild acne? And I love this part because as some of you may know, I really enjoy going to my hot hit workouts and my hot yoga. And at the beginning, this is why I love being in the skincare industry, because at the beginning, when I first started this, I'd never done anything hot yoga and stuff. Well, when you do some sort of hot activity, it's like you're out in the South July heat. And so my chest was just dripping sweat. And I had a huge breakout and it was not go away. And I was treating it and it was like itchy and stuff. And I did something to solve the problem. So go ahead, Lindsay. Are you going to do your hot yoga in the hot summer too? Yes. <gasps> it gets so hot here. I just love it so much. It is so hot. And I've never done hot yoga in the hot summer. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up super early in the morning when it's not 90 degrees at eight o'clock. And that's how I'm going to be able to do it. Because right now I get up at 5am to do my okay, work. I was about to say, all they got to do is say, we'll have our class outside. <laughs> <laughs> but don't bump. I mean, seriously, it's so hot here. And humid. No, I know. So that I actually am already because right now in the winter, I love going because it's so cold. But in the summertime, I'm gonna Well, it's not winter. It's springtime. When you win in the winter, I mean, springtime, it's still chilly, though, right now, when I get up at five o'clock in the morning, I'm still chilly. But you come, come in the south and you hit the July and August. Oh, my word. Well, I guess we'll just see how it goes. I'll ask you in the summer. I don't appreciate that. That was totally, you were trying. I'm like, Lindsay, I'm doing so good with my hot yoga. Mm -hmm, we'll see. We'll, we'll see, see how that lasts. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's such a sister thing to say. I'll check with you in six months, see how you're still doing. Not, you can do it, Ash. Uh-huh. Oh, my word. <laughs> I have those moments, too. We go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, do you remember our BHA Acids podcast? That was episode 90. That podcast, go back and listen to it if you can. We discuss the acid name BHA, and it is great for breakouts as they are able to go deeper into your pores to not only remove that buildup, but also dry out excess oil, otherwise known as sebum. BHAs do this by binding to your skin's natural oils, also aka sebum. To remove the excess sebum, as well as remove the dead layers of cells that appear on the surface of your skin. I mention this because this type of acid is really helpful for those acne breakouts. By the way, we put all of our favorites in our Shop My Favorites 
on lindsayholder.com. So if you're thinking, well, that's great, but what product should I use for that? I got you covered. There's, you don't have to search, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to Google to death. It's all there done. My favorites that I love to use. You can incorporate a BHA in either a cleanser or serum form, multiple forms actually, due to the properties of it being antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. It lessens bacteria growth while unclogging pores. It's especially helpful because it doesn't exacerbate your already inflamed skin. The most popular one you will hear is salicylic acid. And then you will hear the next popular one is when we talk about our acids and stuff like that. And then you'll normally hear benzoyl peroxide too. So you'll normally hear between those two. Hormone triggered acne due to menopause or perimenopause. Let me give you a couple of steps to help with that when it's triggered by your menopause or perimenopause. Number one, use a gentle cleanser. Use a gentle cleanser to wash your face twice a day. Avoid using harsh cleansers that can strip your skin of its natural oils. You can always spot treat those areas, but it's not over your entire, you know, face or the area of concern. You can use a topical retinoid. Topical retinoids such as tretinoin can help reduce inflammation and unclog pores. Make sure to, with your retinoid or tretinoin, go at a comfortable level to where you're not looking like an alligator. So just watch how you apply that. Like during the week, you may not need as many applications as you think. So anyway, you can use a topical antibiotic. Clindamycin can help reduce the bacteria that can cause acne. I don't love antibiotics. So try to get you off of those. I'd rather you use something more, you know, natural and, but that is an option. You can use a topical anti-androgen. Topical anti-androgens such as spirolactane can help reduce the production of androgens, which can trigger acne and topical anti-inflammatories like benzoyl peroxide can help reduce inflammation and redness. Benzoyl peroxide and salicylics for me usually work the best and I like to spot treat those, but usually that's what I go to. Of course, eat a healthy diet. I love cookies though, but just, you know. Oh, you forgot number six. Oh, I went straight to the cookies, I guess. <laughs> no, you got to back it up to number six. Don't eat the cookies. Okay, I will. Okay. And the reason why I say this is this is the one that most people skip and it's the most important. And this is the one where if you skip this step, this is where you're going to get irritated and itchy. Use a moisturizer. Moisturizers. That's going to help your skin keep hydrated and reduce the redness. That's going to keep your skin barrier intact. And that's really important to keep your barrier intact. So that's where, as you're saying, it's so important. Because if your barrier is compromised, that's when you're going to see those blemishes really flare up and start to spread. And then and it's just so dry and itchy. Yeah. And scaly and all that stuff. And so people think, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to put a moisturizer on. It needs to like dry, dry, dry. And no, it's a total combination. Even if I use a salicylic or benzoyl peroxide, I'm still putting a moisturizer. On top. So if you take one thing away from this podcast, that's it. Like that's huge right there. Yeah. And you experience that with your chest. Remember That's why I say it, it was life changing for me. And like I said, Ashley, you're not using a moisturizer on top. And then when you added that in, that's what cured it. It was amazing, which is again, I hate to say this. Well, actually, I don't hate to say this. I'm going to say it again. This is why for me, this is my passion. And I love doing this podcast. I love having our LaPree community. I love working with Lindsay because everybody has these situations that come up. And for me, it was affecting my life. It was affecting my lifestyle. Like I wanted to continue hot yoga, but I was having this skin issue that was really bothering me. It was uncomfortable too, I'm sure. It was very uncomfortable. And then I was embarrassed because when I would work out, I'd have this breakout and you know, you don't want to have like a rash and hot yoga. And this is where I'm so thankful that I had Lindsay to go to and say, look, I'm doing steps one through eight. And Lindsay was like, ah, you skip number six, Ashley. And within one day, boom. Oh, wow. One day. I was like, one day, the itchiness, the redness, it went away. And I was so thankful. I was so thankful. Well, now. So that's why it's important for me. I really want to help you guys out. And I really love sharing every single thing that I learn on, you know, this life's journey. Yeah. I think that's really important. Because sometimes you don't know where to go. You're like, I don't. 
I don't know who to ask. I didn't have time to go to dermatologists. I mean, I've got a full time job. I have two kids. Like, I just was like, ah. You just had that one question. I just had that one question. I'm like, really? Am I going to go in, make an appointment? Like, it's just a whole thing. I just wanted to clear up. Now, if it didn't, if it got more serious and we started, you know, then there's a point to all go, okay, now you need to, you need to go in. Well, yeah, but yeah, little ones for the little changes and little stuff like that. I'm so thankful that I've got this place as a resource so that I, it, you know, I'm an at home person. Definitely eat a healthy diet. Remember, you know, whatever you eat comes out through your skin. That's really important. And eating a healthy diet can reduce that inflammation and keep your hormones in balance. Man, inflammation is just the number one killer for everything. Like all diseases, all illnesses. It really, inflammation is the root of everything for sure. Reduce your stress. It can trigger hormone imbalances that can lead to acne and try to reduce your stress through relaxation techniques such as yoga or my favorite is meditation i like pilates too or just taking a walk outside too i love walking that's my favorite that really helps me especially if you know it depends on my mood sometimes i'll pop in you know a podcast or music and then other times sure i don't take anything and i just listen to the birds you know, I think that's a good thing. Just and kick off your shoes if you can. Walk in the grass. It's amazing. Just that yes. sensory with your feet. It is so true. I have to say yesterday, I was beyond stressed out. Like I couldn't stand it. I went outside, let my puppy run around in the backyard. And I actually, I was like, you know what? I'm so stressed. I immediately took my socks off and I put my feet into the grass. And within five minutes, I could feel my cortisol levels lowering. It was incredible. Yeah, grounding. Yeah, it's, it really, it's, it's not like woo woo hippie style. It actually is scientifically li- back. Yeah, you're literally grounding to the earth. Yeah, because you, you've got to, you know, take out the charged. Yep. Yep, you're overcharged. You're overcharged. So, Lindsay, what are some ways that was so fantastic for the hormonal and all that acne? What are some other ways that you can treat your occasional breakouts and your mild acne? Okay, I was just thinking after this, I'm going to I have a cherry tree outside right now that's the petals are falling. So, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. So, I'm going to kick off my shoes and I'm just going to watch the petals fall. And it's just so relaxing to me. So I'm going to do that after the podcast. Anyway, I'm not there yet, Lindsay Poo. I am still in in my caffeinated day. So I can't, you're also like super pregger. So you're like, it was just so cute. You're like, I'm just going to walk outside and watch the petals fall from the cherry tree. And I'm like, I do. cannot do that. I have, I, I would go nuts. I need to do something else. Yeah, oh, you're, no, you're, I'm exhausted. Ashley asked me how much the baby weighs, and I said, 50 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> he weighs 50 pounds. I don't need the doctor to tell me. I already know. He weighs 50 pounds. It's almost there. And I told Lindsay, Lindsay's like, every part of me hurts. I said, oh, Lindsay, I said, do you want me to come over and rub your feet? Yeah, and she's like, me. don't touch me. <laughs> don't touch me. And I tried to touch her the other day to fill her belly because I wanted to feel Ellison kick. So I get real upset. I'm like, Lindsay, when Ellison kicks, cause he does it so fast, I go say kick. So I can put my hand on the stomach. And Lindsay was like, don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we're talking about premenopausal here and menopausal, but we also have a pregnancy podcast and that's the one a few back. So just see if you're in that spot too, because there's a lot of people having babies later in life. I'm 45 having a baby. I turned 46 in May and it's kind of cool to be able to take care of my skin during this phase of my life too, but I cannot wait to get my retinol back. I'm going to tell you right now and all my modalities. So I am turning 46 in May. I can't believe it. (laughs) And I am also an esthetician. And I often get mistaken, I'm not just bragging here, but I do get mistaken for someone in their early 30s a lot. And that is because I work hard on my skin. And I also work hard to find the products that will work well for you and your skin that is going to make a big difference. The biggest question I get often is, okay, are you doing Botox or fillers? And when I say no, the second question I get, Okay, well, what what do you do? <laughs> what is your secret sauce? One of my biggest secrets is that I use the droplet device. 
This device was created by MIT scientists, and it is the closest thing that you can get results without using a needle, in my opinion. If you head to lindsayholder.com slash backslash droplets, that's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, H-O-L-D-E-R dot com backslash D-R-O-P-L-E-T-T-E and use code LaPreeBeauty20, that's L-A-P-R-E-E, B-E-A-U-T-Y 20, you can get 20% off your first device. This device, get this, delivers the serum 20 times deeper into your skin. And this is without needles. It uses micro infusion technology in this handheld device. That is so incredible. Ashley and I use this at home several times a week. We like to rotate between the retinol drops, for our forehead wrinkles and our neck and 11s and the collagen hydrofiller capsules for that it gives you that plumping lifting effect which I definitely need to just keep up in my 40s my mid 40s it really works I would not say it didn't I mean I would not say it did <laughs> if it didn't and we are so happy to share one of our favorite esthetician secret devices with you. So again, if you want to get that discount code, it's so easy. Head to lindsayholder.com backslash the droplet and use code LaPreeBeauty20 for 20% off. That is a great discount. You're welcome. Because <laughs> we ask them directly, hey, can we even get a discount? Also, that page will give you more information and some before and after pictures for you to look at. So head to lindsayholder.com backslash the droplet today. So here are my steps for occasional breakouts. This is step one. Cleanse your skin with either your normal cleanser or a cleanser with salicylic acid. You can spot treat this as well. I recommend a spot treat. And so I have sebaceous filaments on my nose, cheeks, chin. Right now I'm very limited with my salicylic acid. So I do can't use it like I used to. But when my skin is clogged, I typically go towards this. I love it. We have a couple of recommendations in our store. So go to lindsayholder.com, shop my faves, go to our store, look for the podcast episode. There's your silic, salicylic acids that I recommend. If you have an LED mask or wand, high frequency wand, that's what I'm referring to, use this device while your skin is bare. I prefer to not have a barrier when using a light therapy mask. We go in depth with light therapy and the benefits on how to use an episode 89. So check out that episode. Such a good episode on light therapy. I'm a huge, huge advocate. I did it last night. I Listen to a podcast where I had my Saluma Pro on my face last night. Oh my gosh, to- before this, I did it on my belly before our podcast. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what did you do? Did you listen to meditation? I was doing some research and eating my breakfast. Oh, for Florida? Yeah. Use the blue lights first. So this is the thing. It depends on which modality you have. I have the Saluma Pro that I can flip back through blue lights and red lights, okay? So when you do have that modality, because some just come with red lights, that's why I like having the Saluma Pro and I have then I have a face mask too, but I like to use the blue lights first with light therapy when I have a breakout because you want to kill that bacteria on the top. And then like the next day, I'll switch it to the red lights because then I want to reduce the inflammation and stimulate that collagen. And that's a little trick that a lot of people don't know. Because you- I love that. And then the other thing with the Saluma Pro, it's got one for acne, one for wrinkles. And then the last one is for pain, aches and pain, yeah, aches and pains. And so after I do a tough workout where my back is just really killing me, I'll do the aches and pain ones. I do that one on my back, on my lower back and on my neck a lot. And if you can handle it, I prefer to use the pulse setting. That's the biggest bang for your buck right there. It's just going the deepest in that pulse setting. And I do not use goggles because I like to tighten my eyelids at the same time. (laughs) It's amazing. No, seriously, it is so cool because I can tell that my left eyelid that normally like on the side, it was drooping and the red light lifted it. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I would not believe it had I not experienced it. You have to experience it. You have to experience it because you think it's kind of like, oh, that's a little hocus pocus. And you were the one, Lizzie, that pressured me to get your like, no, Ashley. And I'm like, that is such a bunch of malarkey. And 
I mean, you got to read the science and the studies and the uh, crazy how amazing it is. Next, spritz a toner or essence onto your face. You're adding hydration back into your skin. Now, if you do cleanse with a salicylic acid, then use your normal anti-aging serum. Growth hormone factor serums are great to use when having breakouts. They heal everything. They grow. <laughs> They're just like your one-stop shop. If you're like, I don't know which serum to get. There's so many out there or whatever. Go for a growth hormone factor. They're going to be your most expensive, like a good one, but they really do handle everything. If you do use your normal cleanser, then use a serum with salicylic acid. And I have one that I like inside our um, shop, my favorite. So head to that. Use a spot treatment with benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid to target individual breakouts. So again, I can't stress this enough. You do not need to apply your benzoyl peroxide all over your face because it is very drying and you don't want to dry out your skin. We really want to respect our skin barrier. So just apply it on the specific areas to reduce too much drying out. The same with your salicylic acids. Spot treat those areas instead. It's just so important to recognize that versus all over. Now, if you are highly acneic, I will tell you to use the salicylic and the benzoyl peroxide all over your skin, but otherwise spot treatment. Both salicylic and benzoyl peroxides, they can come in variations from cleansers, pads, creams to spot treatments overnight. You're going to need to pick one. Otherwise, <laughs> you don't want to have the cleanser, then the pad, then the cream, <laughs> then the spot treatment, then whatever. Like, no, we're not doing that. Just pick what works for you, what you like the best. And it also depends. I'm so glad you clarified that. We would have gotten a lot of messages. <laughs> yeah. It also depends what you're uh, doing. So if you're using a modality with a salicylic acid, like a, a skin scrubber, for example, I'm going to, for instance, this is just an example. I would put a salicylic acid serum on my nose and my, um, like cheeks, let it set in to loosen that up. And then I use my skin scrubber to, to pull it off. That's just an example. I'm telling you, it's incredible when if you've never tried it before, I encourage you to try it. And then you will look at yourself and you will be like, oh my goodness, I just got spa results. Yeah, it clears. It is like you had a professional facial. It's incredible. Makes it so much clearer because otherwise you have those, it, just dots all over your face. The black dots. That's the sebaceous filaments. Now for the daytime, definitely, definitely make sure to add that antioxidant into your skin. So what I mean by that is a vitamin C serum or something like that. So another antioxidant to protect your skin from environmental factors, pollution, and for overall skin health. And of course, you're going to definitely add a sunscreen on top to protect your skin. This is especially important when you have those blemishes to prevent the area from darkening further. We don't want to do that. Sometimes I like for just like random blemishes that pop up is a hydrocolloid clear acne patch that contains a salicylic acid. They can seal that area also and keep other impurities from getting to it and from you like picking at it and stuff it absorbs the pus and oil but still keeps that area hydrated at the same time you find those really on the market a lot now they're really hot they come in you know those little packets and then they're great at helping prevent the area from further swelling or inflammation or the affected area you can put one on at night put it on there or even Sometimes during the, you know, I like it during the day too. the ones that are clear. So then kind of conceals that area, but I'm not picking at it at night. Apply a retinol sparingly until you get your skin back in balance. Make sure that so that's my key phrase about that back in balance. Droplet now has a retinol capsule that uses micro fusion technology to go to 20% deeper in the skin. I know, Ashley, you just got your, your, you just ordered your retinol capsules and I cannot wait to use the retinol after I have the baby, I'm so excited about that. So you'll be our tester first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm so excited. And the other thing I'm excited to try out from the droplet is the lip one too, the lip infuser, because I've got the lip one from ourself. And boy, that has made a huge difference in my lips. It's so cool how it plumps it out. But it does it in a good way, not in the irritating way where it makes them swell it fills it with right. peptides and hyaluronic acid. So it's actually 
good for my lips. So that with the droplet, I mean, I really don't want to get... You're going to look like a fish. Yeah. Well, no, I don't want to... I really want my lips to be... <laughs> I've noticed I've lost volume in my lips. And I really don't want to get lip injections personally because that just looks like that would really hurt. And so I'm really excited to try that one out as well. Don't forget to repair your skin barrier with an oil-free moisturizer. And I said oil-free. Replenish the nutrients in that area. It's very important to keep your skin barrier intact. I think we've said that like five times because it's so important. Otherwise, you'll dry it out too much and you're going to do the exact opposite. And then there you're in, you know, swirl of acne trouble right there. So we don't want to do that. If you want extras, extras for this podcast, we're so excited. Go inside our Lapre Beauty community for access. One of the tips mentioned in the community is a beauty tool I love to use for faster results and getting the blemishes to heal. And I'm not going to mention it here. It's going to be inside our community. Head to lindsayholder.com and you will find it inside there. Ashley, where is that going to be? Is that going to be under skin school or? Yeah, this is going to be in skin school. I'm going to write all the steps down. I'm going to have the products linked and every single thing that you said. It's not going to be out on the website. It's not going to be anywhere, but it's going to be in LaPree. Awesome. A few just tips also to just let you know which you probably you know this but I'm just gonna say it do not pick or squeeze the pimple like you know not to do that it is very <laughs> you are so funny Lindsay you know not to do that boys and girls okay <laughs> well because I mean you know it you know it's gonna get no my husband did it the other night I go oh, what are you doing he goes shut up Ashley I'm gonna pop it I'm like oh mm, mm, mm. yeah and then Mm -hmm. And then you risk it scarring, spreading, all that stuff. It is so tempting that it looks so fun. You want to do it so, you know, so easy, but try not to. Okay. Then of course, drink lots of water and exercise, reduce stress after exercising. Either use like either take a shower. Sometimes we can't take a shower to rinse off the sweat. So take some micellar wash with you on the go. There's micellar wipes that you can take on the go. I like those. That's really nice to use. And then I love a good high frequency tool. Use over in the infected area after cleansing. But before moisturizing, high frequency is awesome. It greatly reduces the bacteria in the blemished area. I do have the tool that I like inside our shop, my favorites. Head there, very easy. When you use a high frequency tool, make sure to ground it, please. So what that means is put your finger on the tool then touch the blemish, lift up your finger, let the tool be on your blemish for about three to five seconds, put your finger back on the tool, then pull it off. Otherwise, that, you know, you can feel some electricity. <laughs> you know, I actually just tested it on myself one time just to feel like, you know, well, how big of a shock is it? Like, you know, I was scared to do it. And it's a little buzz. But if you accidentally do it, you'll be fine. Just so you know. Yeah, you'll be fine, but let's try not to do that. And definitely don't touch any metal or anything while you're doing it. So <laughs> usually estheticians will say, ooh, because we have usually stools that we work with and the base is metal. And sometimes you'll you always. Oh, oh, I'm like metal. What are you talking about? Oh, that makes sense. And, yeah. And so sometimes when they touch that and they use that, woo, you get that charge. It's so funny. But yeah, use a high frequency tool. And if you have just a blemish or two, you can just basically spark it is what they call on that just that blemish you don't have to go around your whole face but if you want to you can too of course while you're there you could do your whole face but I do like to just spark yeah because it brings oxygen to your skin so yeah but sometimes I just like to spark that one area for sure just like a focus focus thing so I hope these tools are very helpful for you I hope you've learned some things Angie again thanks for asking your question because your question is helping other people and I hope it helps you too, Angie. So thanks so much. And thank you for being a part of our community. We had so many new members join this week. We are just like so overwhelmed with gratitude and appreciation. And then we had podcast reviews. I mean, I just want to say thank you. And I know Ashley wants to say thank you too. Ashley, say thank you. <laughs> funny <laughs> no if you've listened to us in the past I can't even tell you it's just you know how like just little things just lift you up and they're just so motivating just knowing that we are making you laugh giving you some helpful information and making a difference it really just 
reminds us of what our purpose is. And I just appreciate the feedback. I really do. And also, I know that we are all extremely busy. So I know it takes you time to fill out a form. I know it takes time to write that review. And I know that there is intention behind it. So I just want you to know, I recognize all of those things. And sincerely, I really deeply appreciate it. And every single time we do this podcast, okay. I, I was hesitant to ask you to say thank you, because I was like, this is gonna be a 10 minute thank you. It's not just a sentence or two. I know. I'm just grateful. And I and, and it's and it's also I love I also love what I do. So it it shows. It does show. <laughs> we definitely know that. Head to lindsayholder.com, join our membership. We are here for you. It's just me and Ashley. Just us two. This is what we do. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. This is just this is my cue to get of off. Us. You're not allowed to sing on the podcast. That's <laughs> rule number one. I think that's what we established. Thanks for listening to the show. Did I just drop our cool factor? Actually, you. Yeah, we started without a cool factor when. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley, I hope you have a wonderful time in Florida. I hope you get all your rash guards and sunscreens and everything. And I look forward to you sharing on the show. And, oh, you can share it on our sunscreen. My goal is to come back without a tan. Isn't that funny? That is my goal. You can share all your tips on our sunscreen podcast, like the sunscreens that you use, your rash guards. Oh, I'd be happy to. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm excited. Everybody, thanks for listening. We will see you next time or next week. We are here every Tuesday. Thank you.